Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time again. It's time for the J. Craig 5, maybe 10, minute movie review. Good morning. Welcome to Movies Over Coffee. I'm Jay of the J. Craig Podcast. Movies Over Coffee is an attempt to give you an initial reaction as I'm walking out of the theater. Well, that didn't happen this time. But also, more importantly, the follow-up, the next morning, the morning after, if you will. I want to see how the movie feels after I let it set for a little while because I have been deceived many a time by watching a movie and falling in love with it when I'm watching it and then realizing, eh, maybe that wasn't really that good. So the experience sometimes can be, um, well, deceiving for me. So I want to see how the movie feels after I've let the movie sit for just a little while. Now, these reviews are going to be very non-spoiler centric. I'm not going to try to give away any big details. I'm going to give you my opinion of the movie, whether I liked it or not. Um, The characters, direction, the style of the movie, things that I liked about it without giving away important details. Um, So that's essentially what you're going to get here. Hope you like the movies I like and you'll go and see the movie and... Hey, maybe you don't like the movies I'd like, and you won't go see the movie. So it, it's a win-win for everybody. So if you're new to us, make sure you subscribe, like, and follow us. Uh, and also, don't forget, we have the J. Craig Podcast, which is the podcast podcast. So last night, I saw Deadpool 2. Now, before I get into the new movie, I want to talk about Deadpool for a second. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Deadpool. Now, I liked the first movie. thought it was very entertaining. Didn't love it and didn't really seek it out afterwards. Uh, but I really do like Ryan Reynolds in the role. Now, from what I know from the character, the Merc with the Mouth, Ryan Reynolds is pitch perfect for the, for this character. And I know it's kind of a dream project for him and a passion project dating back way back into the X-Men movies, which is actually touched on in this movie. So keep your eyes open. Uh, but I, I wasn't a big fan of the first movie, but I did find it to be a very, very entertaining. It wasn't until I saw it on an airplane years later that I I was like, you know what? This is actually really, really well put together. It's a very good movie. So going into Deadpool 2, I really didn't have any expectations. That is, until I found out that one of the guys from John Wick, who went on to direct Atomic Blonde last year with Charlize Theron, was directing Deadpool 2. And all of a sudden, my interest level peaked. And then when they cast Josh Brolin as Cable, well, sir, now you have my attention. Since I didn't get a chance to do an initial reaction as I walked out of the theater, uh, my initial reaction for Deadpool 2 is that it's hysterically obscene. I mean, it is hysterical, it's obscene, it's hysterically obscene, and it's juvenile. And, I mean, quite frankly, that's Deadpool to a T. So what is Deadpool 2 about? Now, this is where I'm having the hardest time with this review, is I don't want to give away any too much information. Um, not that there's these big plot you know, reveals or, you know, really uh, twists or anything like that. But there's a lot going on, and I don't want to ruin it for you in any way. So I'm going to keep this very vague. So Deadpool has fallen into a bit of depression, and he has gone through a uh, self-destructive pattern to kill himself. And we all know that Deadpool can't be killed, so this becomes an endless, often hysterical, vicious cycle. And that's where Colossal, or Colossus, the big metal dude from X-Men, shows up and helps put him back together, so to speak, and tries to recruit recruit Deadpool to become an X-Men. So that's where Wade Wilson, or Deadpool, sets his sights on a young, gifted, uh, very troubled young kid, mutant, uh, in, in order to save him. Now that's when we're introduced to Cable, who's a time traveler. And now Deadpool must put together a team in order to stop Cable and save the kid. Now, that's essentially all I want to tell you about the movie. Just know that it's about family, it's about sacrifice, and it's about selflessness. And throughout the story, Deadpool must uh, decide whether he is going to be selfish, like he always is, and think about himself, or is he, can he become selfless and sacrifice something in order to do something better for other people? And so what I really liked about this movie is it focused on a personal story. Not an end of the world thing, not an end of the universe, not an end of the city, not big monsters. This is about a personal tale of someone who is trying to become a better person, find family, find a heart, and just be selfless instead of being selfish, as he has been forever. That's the Merc with the Mouth, right? That's what he does. So I really, really enjoyed the movie because I thought the story went the extra mile into getting into a character. And I really enjoyed it for that reason alone. This movie is chocked full, and I mean fully loaded with those kind of Easter egg moments. It's got Avengers, Wolverine, and X-Men jokes throughout. So if you like that kind of thing, you're going to love it for that alone. There's an amazing X-Men cameo that completely took me by surprise, and it's over in a blink, 
So you don't want to miss it. Don't go get popcorn. But it is fantastic, and I was really surprised by it. Um, this, this movie has a lot of stuff going for it, and I think, obviously, the one thing is it had a, a character who had purpose, right? And it had a character who had an arc, and in a comic book movie, that's not always the case. So there's a lot of fun. The action is very stylized. It's made by the guy who did one of the guys who did John Wick and Atomic Blonde. So it's got great action, great uh, style to it uh, without being overdone. Because that's one thing from the first movie is I felt a little, I was getting bored with it. With this movie, the, the, the story was better, but it kept going in new directions. Now, speaking of cameos, there is a great, amazing cameo by someone called The Vanisher. Now, this is one of those where if you blink, you miss it, and you might not even be able to tell who you're seeing there for that quick second, but it's fantastic. So, again, you got to keep your eyes peeled because there's a lot coming at you, and you got to, you know, try to try to figure out what you're seeing sometimes. Um, now, the Indian cabbie and T.J. Miller are not in it as much as you might think. Um, now, they are funny when they're in it, but they come and go. So, thankfully, they're not, you know, in it for long because, I mean, T.J. Miller, I mean, he can... Well, you know what I'm talking about. Don't forget to stay for the mid-credit sequence of Deadpool 2. This You don't want to miss this. Uh, it's the mid-credit sequence. It's arguably the best mid-credit sequence ever devised. It's fantastic. It's like its own little movie. You're going to love it. It's fantastic. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, version of Movies Over Coffee. Uh, I'm Jay the J. Craig. I hope you go see Deadpool 2 and I hope you really like it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow us and give me your comments and blah, 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 blah. Bye.